hello everyone this is satvik and this video we will be doing stack overflows so before doing that uh, let me point out to a quick resource so this is my website and uh, i mentioned a detailed guide on what happens when you compile your c program and uh, what happens like what is a compiling and all the all that thing so the thing the goal here in the stack overflow here is like so this is the this is my code so this is like a sample code that i wrote and i'll upload this uh, code into my github and i'll point that out in the comments or in the description so go there and check that out so here you can see uh, we have a main function so which is calling check access so i'll just try to walk through what's actually happening in this uh, program so that you can understand what's happening so uh, there is in this void access check so this is not returning anything so that's the reason it's a void and uh, you can see there is a variable access code there is a uh, string called name so in c you don't have a string uh, exclusively so you call a character array as a string so this is fine and you can see there is a function called get s so which is very vulnerable because it reads more than what it is intended to suppose uh, your name is 10 bytes but uh, even though if you include more than 10 bytes it's going to read it and it's going to cause a lot of issue and here uh, our function is also checking if the access code is G1 but here our access code is 0 for some reason so let's see and if it is not 1 then uh, it is going to be access denied so how things work here is quite simple so once you compile so there are like two types like 64 bit and 34 bit so if you are into that but we'll focus mostly on 32 bit because it is the addresses size are smaller and it's easy to see as well but there is no much difference between 64 bit and 32 bit so once you compile it so compiling in the sense like once you write the program so uh, you do the gcc compiler and you can see uh what happens so pre-processing so you you add some kind of uh, modules to be included so these are like standard libraries like for example printf you can't uh you can use printf directly by importing a module so that's how it works uh if you want to learn more just go through and watch some c tutorial videos they explain much better than me so compilation so once a pre-processing is done then your code c code is compiled into an assembly code so I did compile my binary here. So uh, obj dump type in the main. We can see this is uh, an assembly code, and uh, this is in ATNT format. So that's a quite different. So there are two types of formatting. So ATNT and Intel. So if you see percentage signs before your registers, it's called ATNT, or else it's a Intel. So we'll see more about that in upcoming videos. But for this, this is a stack overflow, which is quite easier. And uh, let me go through. And this is what the assembly code means. So this is what the system can understand. And even we can understand too. So and assembly. So then the assembler translates this, this assembly code into a machine code. It can be a binary. It can be a hex, which your system can actually understand. And linking once everything is done, you know, your code files, libraries and all are linked into a single executable or a binary, which you can run on your system. So this is how it actually works. And there are some couple. So what happens when you run a binary is like uh, it's actually located on your hard disk. So it is transferred into your memory. So memory here means RAM, uh, your RAM, random access memory. And then uh, instruction by instruction, it is transferred to your registers. So your registers are in your CPU. So it can be your Intel, ARM or AMD or whatever it is. So these uh, registers are like this. So if it starts, so while going through the registers, if you see E, uh, which is like a prefix, then it is a 32 bit. If you see R, it is a 64 bit. So this is a, a basic trick, but you'll uh, know this once you see more of this uh, once you deep delve into this assembly code and all so stack so every time a function is called a stack is created you know why the stack and all its basic thing so here there are like couple of registers that you need to identify uh, you need to know so there is something called a base pointer so if you know how a stack works so a stack has something called base so uh, if you want to learn more about stack i'll leave a good resource for that and there is something called as a stack uh, base pointer which points to the base of your stack and stack pointer it keeps 
growing when you keep adding your variables functions and all stuff like that and also one more thing uh, if you typically assume a stack in uh, what you see on some tutorials and all it grows upwards but here the stack grows downwards so i mean so your rsp or esp is always lesser than your ebp or rsp so that's how it goes because it's going downwards and there is one important variable uh, important register called as instruction pointer so instruction pointer is very simple it points to the next instruction to be executed the address of the next instruction to be executed this is very simple and uh, you might be thinking if you are an attacker like you can control your you can hijack the flow by rewriting the uh, instruction pointer and all and there are like some uh, general registers like eax cbx or ras rax rbx like there are a lot of them i'll try to link good resource and i'll try to update this uh, blog as well so with more content i did drew some pictures to show how stack works and all i'll try to include all that so that's a basic understanding here but uh, let's try to modify this code a little bit printf uh, access code so this is just for our uh, understanding okay so you don't have to be uh, because in most of these challenges uh, they do provide your source code so it's, it will be much easier for you to uh, analyze and do stuff if they provide you a source code so here what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to just print to see what my access code is and yeah and these are some of the functions so as i told you we will be doing it in the 36 uh, 32 bit format so it's better to have your 32 bit mod uh you know environment set up in your linux box so this this particular command does that and this is how you can run that and the, the point to be remembered is the get s function is vulnerable here if there is no get s function then you know it's going to be difficult to exploit so it's not always easy to exploit everything so that's the basic thing so only certain modules or certain functions which use vulnerable methods or coding practices can be exploited so this might not work on every binary or an executable you see on internet so keep that in mind so let's do this let's copy this uh yeah let me remove all this so so i, I have one so nano main dot c let me paste this code Control S, Control X, and I do already have my 32-bit uh, environment set it up and all. Uh, so I'll tell you why I'm running all these options. So GCC is a compiler here. So M32 is specifying you want your binary to be in a 32-bit format so that you can see addresses and all in 32-bit. So G is for debugging. So I'll tell you why debugging is also very useful and no stack protector. So there is this specifies there is going to be a no stack canary or something which we will discuss in the upcoming parts but uh, to keep it simple so whenever your stack is created a canary is like some kind of a token which is somewhere within your uh, stack so if someone tries to input a lot of data then you know that particular stack canary is going to be rewritten and which makes it which makes the application or your binary to see that okay someone is inputting lot of details so let me exit exit out so that's what a stack canary means and pretty standard hyphen o to binary name main.c and stdc99 is to sometimes what happens is if without doing this you can see get us function uh it will not sometimes uh, because get us is very vulnerable your gcc might not allow you to execute that so in that situations you can just give this option and you know just make it vulnerable just for our demonstration sake so now you can see we have a main.c uh and again this yeah and one more thing once you analyze this code you can see the name is of 10 bytes so anything after 10 bytes maybe something you might be re re rewriting some variables or stuff like that and let's do that so let me input like a lot of is you can see your access code is uh, some big value maybe or if you convert this into uh, a hex format you can see it's all is access is denied and segmentation fault so segmentation fault is something that you see once you have like uh, uh, once you try to crash your program so let's uh, let's do it once again 
with 11 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now you can see your access code is 65. I'll tell you what 65 means. A second. Let me launch Python 3. There is a function called odd. You can see the value of A here is 65. So your access code is pointing to 65. So you may be having doubt like Satvik, you try to initialize your access code uh, before your name, but why is it uh, after the name? Like why, why are you, why could you overflow this and write it to the access code? As I told you earlier, your stack is growing downwards. So your input goes upwards. So after 10 is, it's going to be the next spot is going to be for the access code. So that's how it's going to work. Let's try and see if you can run this. And also if you could observe the code, you can see if you can rewrite this access code to one, then you'll get your flag. Uh, let's do this once again. Uh, I guess I did it bad. So let me do it in an easier way. Okay, so this is how it is. I guess I didn't give it properly. So you may be having doubt like Satvik, you passed one, but why is it not going? Uh, let me show you once again. So it is going in a character format. So character of one is nothing but 49. So how do you pass it? So for this, uh, I'll actually use uh, this module on Python 3. So you just need to pass one so that you can bypass the system. So Python 3 hyphen C, I'm just doing a one liner. Code sys sys dot std out dot buffer dot write off. Uh, let me put it in by format. Uh, one second. So a into ten plus uh, by format of slash hex. I'm just passing it in the hex format. So hex of uh, one is always going to be one. Let me see if I can show you that. I guess it doesn't do like that, but uh, I'm sure. Yeah, this is a different thing, but uh, basically like if you know hexadecimal, so hex of zero one is nothing but one. So that's what I'm trying to pass here. So this is I'm passing 10 is uh, it's in the byte format. So it works actually well if you pass it in the byte format uh, or else you can try and do with like normal format as well. I will just pipe this to main and you can see your access is granted. So what we did here is like we rewrote that access code to zero one way uh, value and you can also see what's actually happening. Uh, you can see it's actually printing in the byte format, but there is no use if you can do it like you can point this to a different file and you know, just pass that file that also works, but I like to pipe it out, which makes my job easier. So we, you can also use on tools and stuff which we will be using in the upcoming videos uh like we'll try to use the same code pop shells you know pop like a shell like a bash shell or something like that and we'll do some return to libc return to text like there are some some attacks which i'll try to cover and i'll maintain a good github repo uh, of all these source codes of all these things so that you can practice it in your local environment and uh that being said, I hope it's clear. So let me give a quick brief once again. So I'm just passing 10 is, which is the size of your name. And your uh, after that is going to be your access code, which I'm rewriting to zero one. And uh, I'm passing it to the main and I got the flow. I, I hijacked this uh, access code and yeah, you got it. So I hope it's clear. This is like a basic thing. So we're just rewriting other variables within your stack. So that's what we've done actually here. We, we haven't done anything deadly, but this could be deadly in the upcoming videos. So thank you for watching this video till the end. If you have some suggestions and stuff, do let me know in the comments. I'll leave the link for all uh, the GitHub repo, which contains all this source code and stuff in the description below. So go there and check that out. Uh, this is Atvik signing off. I meet you in the next one. Thank you.